Hi everyone. I hope I can make myself understood here. Uh, it's also very interesting to be back here. I was um, I had a scholarship in the same university over ten years ago, <laughs> my masters, and it, uh, it's very nice. Um, yeah, at that time, that time we had uh, some Brazilians here, but it's always good to see that um, what I'm actually going to talk about, about the global south, <laughs> is a very interesting and changing concept. Um, so this is where my university is, right here <laughs> in the countryside of Brazil, but uh, two hours from the uh, capital uh, in the coast of Fortaleza and there was a huge mo moment in Brazil uh, in the last uh, 10 years that universities moved to the countryside with technology courses uh, and uh, technology courses that were deeply interlinked with promoting uh, sustainable development so it was about um, in rural areas, having a dialogue with uh, people who are producing, who are um, uh, having local businesses participate in university life and uh, increase job, uh, jobs in these areas. And um, we have, we actually are having a moment where people from Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro come to study with us, so we have quite a few students. We have at least a third of students who are from São Paulo and Rio de Janeiro. Uh, before we, we used to move to study, I was one of those who moved to São Paulo to study, and then I moved here to do my masters. Then I moved back home. Uh, but now we're having the other way around. We also have around 10 to 20 percent of African students, mostly from um, Guinea-Bissau, Cabo Verde, and Angola. Uh, and it's very interesting to see this movement also happening here, uh, changing our, our courses too. But anyhow, so this is us, and this is supposedly yeah, a part of the Global South. Um, we, so we had this um, undergraduate course, not for long now, it's called Digital Design. The university itself uh, was formalized in 2006, so it was founded in 2006, and the course in 2015. Sorry. Thank you. So in the course in 2015. Um, and it started with a course credit called uh, Multimedia, and others like uh, Multimedia Systems and Digital Image Editing followed uh, on that same line. Um, so we also started developing, there were already courses in the university that it were, they were much more um, oriented to programming languages, to computer science, to uh, computer engineering courses. We're actually five. We are now digital design, we had computer engineering, uh, computer science, Information systems was the first one, um, and we have computer networks. And we started developing our own systems. So one system that we developed, that we installed, and we, we, we customized in our university was Moodle. And we started to use Moodle also to bring together all the design uh, productions and students would also um, use it for portfolio and so on. So we, we first used Dropbox and WordPress for student work, and then we went on to use, using Moodle and other support for portfolios and other uh, tools. Um, so my classes are uh, more than 40 students, uh, and I also have classes with less than 10 students, so they vary a lot. Um, we don't have uh, 
uh, a lot of internet access, so technical problems happen there too. <laughs> <laughs> so, even, uh, uh, this okay. Hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, can you hear me better now? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna try use this one. So, as I was saying, we don't have much internet all the time in class. We have uh, at the beginning some the research a few tutorials, uh, but it's a lot of students usually, and classes are two hour long. So usually, usually we have um, oriented uh, production. Um, so we decided on a few tools, and they would work in pairs or in groups. The tools we decided for. Uh, were Inkscape, GIMP, Audacity, Synfig, and YouTube. Oh, thank you. Okay, and then um, their works we also hosted on the university website. So it was designed by actually by one of the students with collaboratively he put the 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 ideas online as well, and they they discussed on an etherpad, and you can get you can find a gateway to all the other courses. Uh, none of the other courses have portfolio and works published. Only the digital design. Um, and we started also um, who and what what are we going to learn, and who are our role models. So this was uh, a big question because the the other courses are all um, very um, oriented towards software development, and we knew that the design would have much more interest, much more varied interests, and would seek more more different um, uh, profiles from to learn from. Yeah. So we decided to contact the local hackerspace. So there is a hackerspace in Fortaleza that has also students from other universities, people from government, professionals, and they meet up uh, on uh, Friday, Saturday, sometimes during at night, during the week, and uh, they do projects together. So we went there and we had a project showcase. So the students could uh, listen to projects that were being developed, but they could also talk about things that they wanted to do and if they could find uh, people who could work with them. Um, and it, well, uh, it was a big class with 44 uh, students were interested. We, had, we have a bus, uh, the university has a bus that takes students from their home to the university, from the, the, the center of square, so they all go to the center of square and they go to the university. And the bus was completely full for this uh, visit. We went to the university bus. And there were also some pretty interesting things, like a, a project they do with uh, old video games, like trying to uh, use uh, old video games with uh, tablets. It was like a, a museum of video games. And they started, from that point on, they started collaborating with the space, but also having ideas on what they could produce, uh, things they could start in university. Um, so at the end of the, the semester, all their uh, portfolios were linked in the university website. Uh, so we have the names of the students here and the themes what they worked in, and they would provide a link that would serve as a yeah a gallery, a portfolio of uh, whatever material they selected. We did not select any of the material. And some students who did not really want to um, show or who were not ready to show most of the work, they had that, uh, that decision uh, was put on them to what did they want to show. They had, they could do um, projects uh, that they would 
find references to, so they had uh, their references linked there as well. And the, all their experiments with the software they selected. So they experiment, the experiment with text and image on Inkscape and GIMP, and uh, with audio on Audacity, with animation then on SimFig, um, and also they experimented with video. Um, we tried video first uh, with uh, VideoPad, which is not a free software, it's a uh, shareware. And having been so used to free software, they didn't really like it. Uh, so we kind of abandoned that. Um, it, it was, it, it, they felt very limited coming back to a shareware after having all this time in, in a free software. So we did some things which were more straightforward in YouTube. U YouTube also has a, an image editor, and mostly video dub. So they used uh, video dub as well. Um, and their projects, they chose the themes of their projects, and they decided uh, that the project should reflect the community. So it was all about uh, the campus they were in, and uh, the problems they experienced, like the bus, uh, the ritual every day the bus is really full and uh, they wish there were more buses and so on and so forth. So uh, they, they researched that, they interviewed people um, and well they also uh, thought about creating startups, imagine themselves creating a startup, build startups portfolios and in the, with the hackerspace they continued that experience sharing projects and even they could uh, ha participate in international communities and think about how it would be like to present um, and interact with uh, international uh, teams. Uh, now they are building their own websites so um, uh, for portfolio and so on. So uh, this, this new um, uh, idea of having your own having an identity of your work online that you can interact and then uh, uh, continue to build upon is growing. Um, so they build their own portfolios and put them up online. Um, and we, did, we recently did a uh, poll about what was it like being this new university and studying with uh, free software for design. So my students are 17 to 20 year olds. And at the end of the first semester, uh, only with free software tools, um, they, they, worry, they said that 11% of them said that uh, they did not agree with the statement that the university should have exclusively free software. 84% uh, said that learning about free software is very important. 60% uh, said that Inkscape and GIMP are great tools for image editing. And uh, I also do a diagnosis in the beginning of the semester. So you had a big majority of students who, had, who did not know any image tools. Uh, so 60% already um, uh, had this, agreed with this sentence that Inkscape and GIMP are great tools. 73% said it was important to contribute to Inkscape and GIMP development. Now this, uh, this new course, this, these students, they are in an advanced IT campus. They are very close to other students who already contribute to software development. So they had this in mind. And some of the comments, some of the free comments that they put in the poll, it's good to learn about the concept, not about the tools. So they understood that there was a diversity of software and that they could do for example, uh, deal with uh, image resolution, uh, editing image in different resolutions in uh, Inkscape or GIMP or whatever. Uh, and that they worry about other software in the job market. So this was a big influencer also on that 11%. If, um, what if I don't know what else is out there? But then again, um, not only uh, other software than the one I learned. Yeah. And Sometimes I don't like some of the tutorials I find. 
this was a big annoyance. They would try to build their projects, learn new things, and they could not find, especially in Portuguese, uh, good tutorials they could rely on. And yeah, well, the, and the importance of learning about the development of free software and contributing to it uh, is something that they would be inclined to do. Um, well, yeah, I guess this is it. Well, thank you.